Hey guys, it's me Kiana once again. Coming at you today with a purpose today. Um, I've been rustling inside of myself. If I wanted to do this video. The reason why is because I know people judge and you know people can be mean at times and you know their perceptions about you are different from what they thought you were then you know they can maybe lash out at you or say something negative and sometimes you just don't want that stigma attached to you but I think God has a way of tugging at you until you do what he wants you to do and you can fight him all you want but if you have this closeness with God that he will make sure you're going to do it or you're going to struggle hard if you don't. So I've literally battled for three weeks if I wanted to do this video. And I'm coming at you with no makeup on. I'm coming at you. I'm not dolled up. I'm coming at you because I want, I want to touch someone out there. I want to heal someone's heart. I want to encourage someone. I want to uplift someone. I want to let you know that God is a good God. And if he could pull this sinner through, if he could take this sinner out, then I know he could do it for you. Because see, I'm not special. I'm not as highly favored as some people think. Because we all are highly favored. We all are his children. We all are blessed. So I come at you today just to let you know a little bit about who I am. But more importantly, whose I am. And I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be uplifted. I'm not going to just tape uh, this video in the good part of my home. And I'm not going to just tell you all about my business that I have. I'm not going to tell you about how many TVs I have or how many cars and vehicles I have. I'm not going to tell you any of that. Because right now, I want you to know where I came from to get to where I am. And who did it for me. So, I come at you today with a story about a woman that didn't know her man was a junkie. She didn't know because she's never drank anything, never smoked, never smoked a cigarette or anything else. Never been in that circle. So she didn't recognize the signs. Well, she gets pregnant. And eventually, because it's a high-risk pregnancy, she has to quit her job where he should have stepped up as a man and carried everything and everybody like she has so often done. He relapses. And one day when he's supposed to go off and use the money to get a money order and she's actually waiting at home for the money order, he doesn't come back for a couple of days. He spends the rent, he spends the rent money. Spending the rent money made her homeless. When I say homeless, you guys, I'm talking about homeless. Real homeless. Not laying on somebody's couch, not being at your girlfriend's house or your friend's house where you don't want to be and you can stay in the basement. No, I'm talking about homeless where, where I'm going to sleep tonight. Are they going to put me out tomorrow? Or wherever you at that night? My mother, her mother, her mother sick, disabled, says she's too stressed out with anybody around or too tired or too, uh, it can make her too sick to have anybody else living around her. So she lets the person come, but every day asks her when she's going to leave. Again, don't forget this is a high-risk pregnancy. So she's stressed calling shelters every day by 8 o'clock a.m. Being told no for two, three weeks. The fourth week she was told yes. She goes to the shelter. It's a really nice shelter. It's not like a traditional, what you would think a traditional shelter is. It's, it was really nice. Family and women at the bottom floor. Men on the top floor. 
this woman with high risk pregnancy begins to befriend everyone there and they became in a sense her aunts and uncles. Well she attends Bible study faithfully there and in the Bible study the person that's helping run the Bible study she meets a gentleman named Chuck. She's wobbling through. She's the only pregnant woman there, so she's getting all the attention. They love her to death, and she loves them. Chuck becomes her friend. I mean, genuinely her friend. And in seeing the child's father come up sporadically just to see how, you know, the young lady's doing, Chuck asks, why are you with him? Clearly he's a junkie. And she says she's not with him, it's just that he comes over, you know, every now and then to talk to her and, you know, just interact somewhat. Well, she has the baby. A few ladies come up from the shelter to see her at the hospital. But Chuck came up as well. He was the only man that actually came up. And he's still her friend. The child's father was there during the during the uh, the C-section and after as well. He stayed for a total of three days, and he underestimated Chuck. He figured she don't want him. I can leave out the room as much as I want. So of course, with his junky tendencies, he run in and out, in and out. Meanwhile, Chuck is telling her. You know you don't have to be with her. I'll help you raise your children. And you'll never, ever have to be homeless. You'll never, ever have to have your child not have a father. And I'll honor you as the woman of God that you are. And I won't ask to touch you or attempt. I will honor you as the woman of God that you are. And I'll marry you. Literally, 30 days after she went out of the hospital, 30 days later, that woman married Chuck. And they actually had the first wedding and wedding reception in that shelter. On the 50th day, after being married, had the baby, and all that, they leave the shelter. The job that Chuck worked at was right next door to the house that they moved to, where she actually worked there as well. In fact, they would bring the baby there. And they were able to have the baby there and work at a cab company. Well, they were smart enough to get all the ins and outs of this cab company, learn everything they could about transportation, the permits you have to have, the process of owning a transportation company, dispatching secrets, all of that. They learned everything. And they soaked it up like a sponge. They moved and upgraded to a condo on the river and opened up their own transportation company with everything that they learned from the transportation company they worked for. They quit their jobs and ever since then they've owned their own transportation company successfully. They've never interacted with the child's birth father. Chuck has been nothing but the best dad in the world. Chuck has never been married before, never had children before. It almost seems as though God had worked everything out beforehand 
and literally everything that was missing in Chuck and this female's life, when they came together, everything was completed. You see, he has a way of, he has a way of, if you follow his path, even when it doesn't seem like the puzzle pieces fit, they all come together. And they come together so well where you don't even have to force the puzzle piece to fit. They come together so well that you know it can't be nothing but God because we as humans, we as man, we screw things up. That's just what we do. And if we don't screw it up, we try to make it fit, which eventually screws it up too. But when he has his hand on you, and he has his hand on the situation. Everything else falls into place like dominoes. And I wanted you guys to know that that young lady I was talking about, that lady that was homeless, that lady that was not worthy of God's love, his grace nor his mercy, that lady that was a fornicator, and a son. That lady that was homeless had nowhere to turn to and not only her own family couldn't even help her. That lady that thought that everybody had forgotten about her and God had turned her back on her. That lady was me. That lady was the person that you see before you every day smiling. And the reason why I can smile is because I know who God is. And I know not because I've read about it. I know not because I've seen it on a video. I know because I've experienced it. I know because I know that his hand has been on me from day one. And not only do I know it, I feel it. I'm giving you this video today because, I'm yes, I'm revealing things that I may not want to reveal. But I'm revealing it because I know that somebody out there needs this encouragement. I'm revealing it because I know somebody out there needs the love of God that is already bestowed upon them and don't even know it. I'm revealing it because I want you to know that there is something and somebody greater than your situation. I'm revealing it because I want you to know that he is just waiting for you to call on his name. Call on his name because you are chosen and handpicked by him because he knows every hair that's on your head, the number of every hair on your head. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're going through. But if you keep putting things and people ahead of him, you're going to continue to go down that same road. If you turn it over to him, it seems simple. It seems simple, but yet it seems hard. But if you give it to him and turn it over to him, I guarantee you your situation will change. We serve a good God. And I don't know about you guys, but it's hard for me to contain myself when I know that I was homeless less than two years ago. And now not only I have my own place, my own husband, I made it through when the doctor told me and the baby that we have a 50-50 chance. Had to be resuscitated. My baby had to be resuscitated and everything. I had to be resuscitated and we made it through. I know he took me from that to now I have my own business. Now I don't have to work for someone else. Nor does my husband. I don't have to go through living in a shelter with 60 other people. You can't tell me I don't serve a good God. You can't tell me that. You can't tell me that. And I'm going to stop the video here so you guys can hear the rest of my story.